In this lecture, we'll talk about marketplace competition and how it drives efficiency. Now, one would think that competition should improve the quality of goods and services that are available or reduce the prices of those services. Let's look at Marriott's, Marriott Hotels. It went from a small root beer stand in 1927 to its current status of 3,900 high quality hotels in 72 countries. Marriott believed that if it treated its employees, this was its operating model, if it treated its employees well, they in turn would provide good service to customers. That has worked. Marriott has garnered a reputation as a high quality hotel chain, and it's now competing to attract younger travelers by changing the way its lobby presents by providing different amenities, convenient ways. Essentially, it's continuing to adapt and change because it's trying to continue to adapt, to adopt, to attract new customers as customer uh, demands or customer preferences change over time. And it's doing that in competition with other hotels. It's also expanding into Africa and Asia to try and capitalize on market opportunities. It's been ranked as one of the, the, the the uh, leading hotel groups across the world. Competition drives this kind of behavior because in order to succeed, you have to give the customers what they want at a reasonable price. And those are that's the benefit of a competitive environment. That's the logic of it. So let's look at it a little bit more closely and how that affects the marketplace, the different kinds of competition. Competition is rivalry among businesses for consumer dollars or for dollars from anybody that is purchasing customers, customer dollars, customer value. According to Adam Smith, competition fosters efficiency and low prices by forcing producers to offer the best product at the most reasonable price possible. Those who fail to do so aren't able to stay in business because somebody else will do it. Thus, competition should improve the quality of goods and services available or reduce prices. With a free enterprise system, there are four types of competitive environments. There's pure competition, monopolistic competition, oligopy, and monopoly. Pure competition is the market structure that exists when there are many small businesses selling one standardized product. No one business sells enough to produce of the product to influence the market's price because there's so many other players. And because there's no difference in the products, prices are determined solely by the forces of supply and demand. Monopolistic competition is the market structure that exists when there are fewer business than there are in the pure competitive sense in that environment. And the differences among their goods, they, the goods they sell are small, you know, like aspirin, soft drinks, vacuum cleaners. These are examples of goods that are sold in this mon mon monopolistic competitive environment. There's differences in packaging and maybe warranty, whatever, but generally they all satisfy the same consumer needs. An oligopy is a market structure that exists when there are very few businesses selling a product. In an oligarch, oligopy, individual businesses have control over their product's price because each business supplies a very large portion of the products sold in the marketplace. So it's hard for some consumers to get access to other products other than the ones that I'm selling. Nonetheless, the prices charged by different firms, they still stay fairly close together because one company might, other companies will respond to a price change just to make sure they maintain their larger market share. And the last view is a monopoly in the, the market structure. It's, it's a, where there's only one business providing a product or service. Utility companies that supply electricity, natural gas, water, they're monopolies. The government permits these because they create very efficient 
access or very efficient uh, distribution of that particular service because oftentimes there's large economies of scale associated with these utilities. Um, but they don't want, they, they need to have some sort of a, um, a price control because they do have the only, they're the only uh, office in town, if you will. And so government steps in and takes some control. So here's another case where the question of, if you let the market consolidate around a monopoly, then too much price power moves into the organization and the consumers have to essentially pay whatever the price is that's being offered. And so that's one where one way where, where markets move in a direction that government is often considered to be um, to bring to come in and have some important effect in reducing that negative consequence of that natural market condition. Government granted monopolies therefore also are generally subject to government regulated pricing if they want to stay in business, particularly when it's some necessary thing like water or heat or telecommunications. In the next lecture, we'll step back again and look at the macro economy in which all of these business and their, and their customers live and work.